the aroma of sacrifice. Uh, contemporary songwriter, it's probably 40, maybe 50 years old now, put together the lyrics of this song. I don't have it written down, but it's called Broken and Spilled Out. And at first, the beginning of the song is about this scene. But then the song turns and describes the scene that will come at the cross of Calvary where Jesus is willing to be broken and spilled out for all of humanity. This story is about the aroma of sacrifice. I believe that Mary gets it. And that's why Jesus honors her. And says this will be, if you read it, it's in all four Gospels. Try and find how many stories are in all four. This one is. <laughs> Jesus says wherever the Gospels preached, this story is going to be told. Because it's a story about someone who loves me and is all in. It's a story about the aroma of sacrifice, but it's also a story, unfortunately, about the stench of self-interest. Because no sooner than Mary breaks that pint of pure nard over the feet of Jesus and wipes it with her hair, Judas can't hold it in any longer. He's indignant and he's angry. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor, it's worth a year's wages. Um, and some in the church might have saddled right up there with Judas. Yeah, man, we could use this. John tells us what was behind this. It wasn't righteousness or even self-righteousness it was self-interest we learn that the betrayer before he was a betrayer was a thief he carried the money bag for the 12 and apparently john later found out that he had been embezzling all along What are the steps that ultimately lead you to stand before the enemies of Christ and offer Jesus in betrayal for 30 pieces of silver? A couple of dollars here, a couple of dollars there from the money bag. Feeding a heart consumed with self-interest. And before we become indignant at Judas' behavior, it probably would be good for us to allow the Holy Spirit to put his finger on any self-interest that's in us. One of my favorite quotes is from one of my heroes, E. Stanley Jones. He attended Asbury College, where I attended great missionary in India, wrote tremendous books like Victory Through Surrender. And in that book, he wrote these words. E. Stanley Jones, just as my fingers are rooted in the palm of my hand, so all outer sins are rooted in the unsurrendered self. Why do we get angry and blow our top? Because someone has crossed the self. Why do we lie? Because we think it will be some advantage to the self. Why are we dishonest? Same reason. Why are we impure? Because we think it will be some pleasure to the self. Why are we jealous and envious? Because someone is getting ahead of the self. All these outer sins are only fruit. The unsurrendered self is the root the outer sins are, sins are symptoms. The unsurrendered self is the disease. Quacks treat symptoms. Doctors treat diseases. Religion that treats outer symptoms and leaves untouched the central disease, the unsurrendered self, is religious quackery. 
The word radical refers to the root. The Christian faith is radical, for it goes to the root of all our problems, individual and collective, and deals with the unsurrendered self by self-surrender. It is therefore the one true physician of the soul. All else is tinkering. And so, it might be in our best interest to allow the Holy Spirit to examine our hearts. I wonder how many of us at times figure out that even our following Jesus is motivated by self-interest. And what he longs for us, each one of us, is to come to that place where even our following of Jesus is not for what he can do for us, but it is following him through his sacrifice in self-surrender. Taking up our cross and following him.